What's going on? Another episode, Tyvis and Dustin, Ultimate Buckeyes coming at y'all soon. What's going on, Dustin? How was your bye week? Tyvis, Tyvis, the bye week was great. It was great. Had a nice weekend. Uh, went down to Oxford, Ohio, and and called the uh, the Cincinnati at Miami game. Uh, it was a great, yeah. great matchup this weekend. And um, yeah, it was nice to be in Ohio because then I can drive home from my game. And it was noon, yeah. so I got got back and was able to hang out with my kids this weekend. It was great. How about your weekend? Where you? Where was uh, the Big Ten kickoff this weekend? Uh, or the, what do you guys? What do you guys call that? The road. The, the the Big Ten tailgate show. Tailgate. The tailgate. There we go. Yeah, sorry. Yes. We it's were, a great so show. We was, where were you guys at? We was in the big house this uh, this past weekend, and I tell you what, man, they <laughs> they do not look good this year. They got a lot of things to fix. Um, I, I ended up talking to Tony Alford, who was, uh, you know, he was the running back coach. Yeah. At OSU. Now he's there, you know, and he was like, you know, we'll be fine and blah, 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 blah. And obviously, you know, they had a good running attack, but come on, man, they struggle with Arkansas State. Like it's, it just don't look the same. The quarterback is, he, he threw three picks, Davis Warren. So now they back into a quarterback controversy. People want Alex Orgy. They had Jake Tuttle who was coming off an injury. So I don't know what they got going on. They defense can't tackle. So it, it, it's going to be interesting that last game of the season. I, the Buckeyes should win that one easily. But I, Hey, hey Tyvis, um, the big house, correct me if I'm wrong. You had, you didn't have the pick in overtime there? I did. It wasn't overtime. It was, uh, it was the fourth quarter though. But I had fourth quarter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I was at that game as a fan. Oh, was you? As a fan, <laughs> that was, was that twenty what twelve thirteen 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 okay 13. yeah that yeah. was uh that's when I became somebody you know I was a nobody yeah. and then I became somebody after that so yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, all, all I remember is uh, I'm pretty sure you won me some money that day and I was like <laughs> oh Tyvis Powell I never forgot your name like dude baller man give me some coin. I, I'm glad that I anytime I could put money in somebody's pocket, that's a, the greatest compliment for me. You know, I was thinking about yeah. you. I was thinking about you earlier today when you know how obviously how how was it being a, a, a white corner in there? Because <laughs> you know, because you know how people are. Like they see you out there, they like, oh, right now, like right now. So yeah. was you more, yeah. did you play off or were you a press corner? I played whatever they told me to play, uh, but so I mean, I, know, I, I, I know certainly OSU did. Okay, hard, right? I mean, we pressed on you know based on down and distance. We pressed in the red zone. I mean, we would press on third and short. Uh, mm. We play a little zero coverage, which was you know very very dangerous. But yeah. uh, no, I mean, I I was. Uh, here's the thing I would say about about my position and being you know the the lone white guy playing a position <laughs> that not, not many white white dudes play. Yeah. And obviously there's stereotypes that are associated with, uh, you know, white defensive backs or white running backs or whatever. Like we're not as athletic. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe that's true. I don't know. I don't know. But I know that I was just as athletic as, as anybody. And uh, but I know this much. Whenever I was out there, dude, they would like they would just check to like a deep ball, like a fade yeah. all the time. I I'm already like, knew it. Already. I, so my, my one buddy, uh, Benny Jopper was a tight end for Michigan, uh, you know, 10 years, you know, senior to you. Uh, and he told me, and we played him in 0 two, John, John Navarre was their quarterback and they would, uh, they called it calf check, right? Cause white mm -hmm. calves, like my, I was a white yeah. guy and yeah. they get to the line. And I was in, if I was in press coverage against Braylon Edwards, they would check to the calf and they just throw a fade. Now the good news is I never got beat for a deep one. Uh, that game he did get me my senior year, but uh, yeah, deep That's, is the deepest, I, wide is the widest, man. I already know. Like that is like the. It's good but that dude, you overcame that though, because I I do think that people, you know, obviously the stereotype is that the child not fast, but I mean, dude, you you went you were successful. You was play a third round pick, played in the league, like. Yeah, of course you got the speed to hang with people. And it's not like it's not like always you didn't have fast people or it wasn't fast yeah. guys in the league. Like I don't so it's funny that people use that stereotype because it's like like obviously he can stay step for step with people and 
I always was just wondering if you had to deal with a lot of vertical routes. Uh, yeah, I, I did. And, and I don't I dealt with, at the same time with a lot of stereotypes. Me being a uh, when I played corner when I went to the league because I went as a safety, but they Seattle made me play corner because Sherm and Brandon Browner and all these tall corners. That was the thing with, with the thing with me was is he fast enough? And yes, I could be fast enough, but then they would be can he drop his hips? That was the thing when you tall, it's like can you drop your hips? And when they yeah. found I could do that, they was like, oh yeah, he actually <laughs> he pretty good. So. Yeah, so I, I it, it was funny, man, because like they would try to put me at safety because I was white and I had a coach in the league. They, they they drafted me. Minnesota drafted me in the third round and I never played safety in college like I, at all. Like my freshman year, I played a little bit of nickel, a little safety, but then they moved me to corner like halfway through the year and I'm starting for, all, you know, all four years at corner. So I get go to the league, never played safety, not since high school and, at, and even in high school. I barely played because I played tailback. Mm. Anyway, so they they keep trying to put me at at safety, and it's like it's not my position. I mean, I I'll, I'll hit you, but I don't want to be in the box. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not smart enough to get guys lined up. You know, I'll, I'm out there like give me a hand signal. You know that that's all I need. My yeah, press, yeah. my man, is it quarters? Is it cover two? Whatever it may be. But no, uh, I I had a corner body, man. I still have a. Now that I've lost a bunch of weight, I've got my corner body oh, back. So yeah, you know, you, which you is got slim again. which is long, length, length, lengthy and and lanky and long arms. I mean, that, I I was really good in press, but uh, the dude, the brothers respected me though. I mean, probably more than the oh, white yeah, guys. I'm sure they, I'm you know? sure they did. I'm sure, yeah, you got and, and you earned that for sure. Oh, yeah, I mean, and like, I mean, it is what it is. Like, when I was in Buffalo, like all, like I was the only white guy in the room, and and they all had mad love for me, and were like, you know, they knew I had good feet and could good, mm. you know, good hips and could turn and run and all these things. But hey, man, it is what it is. I couldn't stay healthy, and and uh, you know how, dude, when you're you're not the man, like once you're just trying to make it and you're bouncing around, like it's it's really really yeah. tough. Yeah, you got to be perfect in everything. You got to be, and especially being a white, a, a white, D, a white DB, dude, a white corner. I <laughs> could, I, dude, if I got beat, if I got beat one time, it's man, Fox always gets beat. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like the, they yeah. only notice the bad plays. I, yeah, it's, people but, don't realize how tough it is. It, it's it's. It's a lot, and then on top of that, it can be a numbers game. It's it's that's a whole nother time. We'll do that another day. But let's let's try to stay focused on the Buckeyes. So obviously, the Buckeyes can't as well as on the bye week last week. What do you do? You think they quote unquote won the bye? And what do you think that means to win the bye week? I mean, I guess I would say this much to win the bye because I saw a couple articles about this. Like Ohio State's looked really good, uh, certainly a lot better against Western Michigan than they did against Akron. But <laughs> I, I do think that them playing as well as they did against Western Michigan, taking a week off, and you saw some of the other teams around the country, uh, including the number one team, uh, Georgia, that goes on mm. the road to Kentucky. And frankly, I think Kentucky probably should have won that game. I don't know why they yeah. punted, punted the football yeah. back late. Everybody but, wants to know the same question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's just – I don't know. And I like Coach Stoops a lot, but I think that was a little conservative. Uh, neither here nor there. I mean, Georgia's been there before. Like, Georgia had three years ago, nearly lost to Mizzou on the road, night game, same same deal. But, I mean, Georgia's a beatable team. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't look great, so I think it makes Ohio State look better. Yeah. And, you know, the, in terms of, like, the rankings uh, and, like, where where Ohio State is and where – I mean, it, it ultimately doesn't matter as long as Ohio State wins the Big Ten and – and to, you know, yeah. takes care of business and gets in the playoff with the highest seed possible. But I mean, you got other teams out there that have have looked pretty decent. I mean, Texas has looked as good as anybody this year. Um, yeah. And hell, you know, Quinn Ewers uh, left the game, strained strained his uh, ab, and then Arch Manning comes in and just lights it up. You know, like I mean, lights it up. Boy, boy got the wheels. I tell you that. <laughs> I mean, he juice. didn't certainly didn't get it from Cooper, Eli, or or Peyton, <laughs> man, or Arch he he, Senior. He said he got it from his mom. Got it from his mother. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But but listen, man, Ole Miss is playing well. Their offense is 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 flying high as as well as anybody. So. We'll see. I mean, in the Big Ten, USC is the only team right now that really sort of impresses me. What about you? 
Yeah, I mean, when you look in the Big Ten, we are we talked about that last week. USC, obviously, I think they played they didn't they played Wolverines this weekend, so that'll be a good matchup there. I don't think they should struggle. I think they should be fine winning that game. Um, yep. and I think that'll boost them. Nebraska's been looking good as well. I, I which is shocking. I mean, I I believed in Matt Rule and what he was doing, but it's crazy how Dylan Riola came comes over there and you know he just oh baby baby Mahomes. Yeah, a little Mahomes, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes the second. Yeah, him. So he comes over there, and I mean, they they look, and I don't get me wrong. Like when they when they go up against OSU, I'm not expecting them to beat OSU or anything like that. But just the the fact that Matt Rule has is trying to right this ship in Nebraska, I think that's good for the conference, and I think it makes the matchup interesting. Um, I was I was upset Washington lost. I thought Washington. You know, with Will Rogers as their quarterback, I thought they looked pretty good. Him and Jonah Coleman as that that running back, I thought they looked pretty decent. They run like a pretty much a pro style offense, so I thought that would be good. And they ended up losing to Washington State, so that kind of knocks things down. But in the grand scheme of things, we Texas and Georgia is the only two teams that I still think is worthy. You know, I think those are the teams that everybody's waiting to see that matchup. Oregon seems to have figured they, they got a little bit better. They figure some things out. Obviously, when they get in the Big Ten play and that and they get to the Ohio State game, that would be one. But I think OSU won this Bob because they got dudes getting healthy. You know, I think they said Donovan Jackson is expected to play. You know, supposed that's supposed to starting, play, yeah. We're starting left guard. So they haven't even been full of strength. And you know, Austin, uh, I think his name's Severfield or something like that. He's been good at left guard, don't get me wrong, but Donovan Jackson arguably was their best offensive lineman. So mm-hmm. to have him back and guys are healthier and their bodies are still right, like that's to me is winning the bye week. So it'll be interesting to see what they do against Marshall. I know Marshall got a they got a decent rushing running back. I think he's rushed for over 100 yards in the in a couple of games that they played. So that'll be something to look out for. But by by any means, I don't think they should struggle to know Marshall. I mean, they I, I don't want them to score. I think that's been the standard where they've held teams to two field goals. I think they gave up a total of six points on the season. So, you know, keep them out of the end zone. If they kick a couple field goals, whatever the case may be, but they can't let them run the ball on them at all. That That's what I'm looking yeah, I mean, for this Saturday. It's the ball, the, the defense to continue to stay where they at. Yeah, like Marshall's Marshall's a little bit of a step up, I think. Uh, you know, from, yeah, from Western, what Ohio State's Western and and obviously Akron the first couple of games. Mm-hmm. I, I from someone who covers both conferences, the Sun Belt and the uh, the MAC, I, I feel like the Sun Belt's a better conference, or at least has been better, at least in, in terms of like the athletes they have over the last several years, a couple mm-hmm. years, not several. But yeah. uh, but listen, Marshall's got a, a really good uh, defensive line. They've got a pretty decent offensive line. They can run the ball. Like if this is a close game, which it will not be, I mean, Ohio State's favored in this game by 39 and a half points, yeah. and the, to- the total is 51. So they're, they're do basically they, do they cover? They're, they're saying, well, Marshall score 10 points, you know, um, and I, I don't, I don't know that they will. You got um, OSU on the cover? Yeah, I, I I dude, I th- these games are impossible to bet. Will Ohio State win by twenty eight points? Yes. Will they win by thirty nine? Oh, yeah. That's that's the question. So like they could Would win by thirty five or thirty eight. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Would you be down on them if they don't say they won thirty five to ten? Like, are you gonna be like, no? I don't. I, I don't care. I mean, people, 30, to me, if to me, out here that will be. <laughs> Well, they're they're idiots, you know, and and they have they have ridiculous expectations, and it really doesn't mean anything. If Ohio State wins this game, thirty-five to ten, uh, great. Who cares? Did they cut? There, are you pissed because you lost money on Ohio <laughs> State by to not cover? Like, okay, I don't know. I mean, thirty-nine and a half points is a lot of freaking points in college football. You got you got kids out here that could could just be having a bad day, you know, or fighting with their girlfriend or something stupid, and, and just all of a sudden they. Don't they come out flat, man? I did Nichols in in LSU two weeks ago, and and Nichols looked like they were going to get blown out out of the water, and then all of a sudden it's like a one score game in the third. But you know LSU takes care of business. The point is, it don't it don't matter. I mean, if Ohio State ends up winning the game, I don't care if it's a one score game in the second half. Ohio State will probably end up winning by three four touchdowns, no matter what. Anyway, well, I think it, it's overblown. I think nowadays. It's not the style points don't matter no more to me. Like it's just about right. the wins because 
you want the winning record so you could get to the your conference championship so you can win your conference. Like it, those days of having winning a hundred to nothing, like it's meaningless. They've made it meaningless because mm-hmm. the rankings don't mean anything anymore unless you're unless you lose a game. If you lose a game and right. you might not make the CFP or you might not make your conference championship, that's when it matters. But if you're going to win every game, if you win every game by one point, I mean, heck, you still going to win your conference championship and you still going to get the first round by. So to me, the style point stuff don't really matter that much. And I, I'm mad about it, but I'm actually glad about it too because it's, it takes a lot of pressure off of a lot of things. Uh, obviously, you want your team to go out there and dominate week in and week out, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is winning. That's just like the NFL. It's like, okay, we only won by a field goal every game, but we won. That was the most important thing. So, yeah, I like that. I like the fact that they did that, and it don't matter to me. I don't, we, Ohio State, for a long time, we never covered the spread. <laughs> we never, ever covered the spread. Yeah, I mean, now, yeah. now we're spoiled as, as Buckeye fans that – you know, we we expect to win by a zillion points a year. I'll tell you this much, man. When we won the title in 02, uh, we didn't cover a lot of spreads, man. We barely won games. We did not. I'm about, let me look at it right quick because I don't think we did. I, I remember the Minnesota game. We only won by, like, a touchdown. Hmm. Let me look at this right quick. I'll tell you which is going to lead me right to my next topic anyway, because everybody always asks me who's better between the 0-2 team and the 14 team, and I want to hear your opinion on it, your un- your unbiased opinion on the two on the two last championship teams. Oh, yeah, no. We uh, I mean, what, you think I'm going to pick your team? You should. You should. Think about I it. Am- I'm Think about it, man. I'm, I'm pulling up the, the the 14 deal, and, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a little side by side comparison as we pull up the depth chart here from the 14 Buckeyes. Michael Bennett. Let me just go through, and you tell me if I got everyone right. Okay, uh, or at guess. least somewhat, somewhat, somewhat correct. Uh, <laughs> I can Bennett, tell you what. Yep. Adolphus Washington, Noah Spence, Joy right. Bosa, Josh Perry, Curtis Grant. Noah, Sp- Noah, Sp- Noah Spence wasn't there. He had got kicked out. So it was our edges was Steve Miller and Joey Bosa. Steve Miller, Kenton McKinley. Yep. Uh, okay. And then you had Perry, Grant, Lee at backers. Doran Grant, Armani Reeves, Tyvis Powell at strong. Von Bell at free. And mm-hmm. there you go. Duran and Eli at corner. All right, where? Let me just go through this. Where did Michael Bennett get drafted? What what round? Fourth or fifth, maybe to Jacksonville. Adolphus Washington. I think he went third to the Bills. Third or fourth to the Bills. I can't remember. All right. What? What? No. Or you said Noah's gone. Uh, yeah, Steve Noah Miller did not get drafted, round. right? Nope. Uh, Bosa, we know him first. Uh, yeah. Perry was what fourth round. Yes, I think Josh went for Curtis, Curtis Grant went, he went undrafted, undrafted. Undrafted. Doran Grant. He went fourth round to the Steelers. Four. Armani Reeves. He His career ended that year because he had too many concussions. And then did Eli play or Gary and Conley or Lattimore? Those guys were, oh my God, you guys had all those dudes on that team. <laughs> so, no, Armani played that. He finished that season as the start nickel, but that was his last okay. season. He, he, he came back for another year, but he was on the coaching staff. Our next year, our nickel was – uh, who was our nickel? It was Marshawn. Marshawn played nickel. Marshawn Lattimore. Okay. Yeah. Man, you guys, but, you're, all your backups are freaking first-round picks. I know. Uh, ain't that crazy? <laughs> Vaughn, Vaughn got drafted, right? Vaughn, Vaughn was the second, second round to the, uh, to the second Saints. Second round. And then mm-hmm. during, and Eli went first round to the Giants. And I went, of course, I went undrafted. First, eighth, eighth round, first pick. Go wow. ahead. Let's hear it. Let's hear yours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let me, let me, let me just, y'all let got me some just, dudes yeah. on that <laughs> Oh, I mean, I got to find the depth chart for our defense here. If I could, yours was like super easy to find. You got to like dig out the. Uh, There's more reason. Uh, uh, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got it right here. The archives. Okay. 
It says Kenny Peterson, Darian Scott, Tim Anderson, Will Smith, C. Grant, Matt Wilhelm, Robert Reynolds, Richard McNutt, Dustin Fox, Mike Doss, Donnie Nicky. That yeah. sound correct? <laughs> it, 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 it does. It does. Uh, do you want to go through and I'll tell you that where we were all, all drafted? Right. Kenny Peterson. Third round. Darian Scott. Third round. Tim Anderson. Third round. Oh, Will Smith. First. First round. C. Grant. Third round. Matt Wilhelm. <laughs> fourth, fourth or fifth round. Robert Rimmel. I, I think fourth. Fifth round. Richard McNutt. He got hurt, didn't didn't play at the end. Well, so, what's so, your, so what's Chris Ga- Chris Gamble was the starter, and he was first. Ah, uh, okay. Dustin, we we know you. Third, Mike Dawes. Second, second right? Dottie Nikki. Fifth. So everybody got drafted. Correct. There's your answer. Congrats. <laughs> all that paid off. It it paid off there, buddy. Because I knew your guys weren't all drafting. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, it, it doesn't always define like how good the defense was, but you know, just saying. Okay. See, the difference is, but listen, though, this is the thing about us. This was our first year in a new defensive scheme, and we went to the Natty and won it all. That's got to count. Okay. For I mean, we, this is the second year we've coached it. That's got to count I mean, for something. I mean, first I guess to be, I guess to, scheme? I guess to be fair. Well, I'm trying to think because like Herb's got there in 2012. Mm-hmm. And like we, so this we was, had a we had a defensive coaching change uh 2014 because we had we had Everett Withers 2012 2013 and our defense was not great and they and he ended up taking the job at James Madison as the head coach so he went and got Chris Ash from Wisconsin and him yeah, and coach right. him and coach Fick was the two D coordinator they co D coordinator thing. Yeah, man, Fickle got screwed. I mean, obviously he's doing great now. But, but out of what? Out of I mean, like, yeah. just, not, just because, like, he, he was put, like, in an untenable situation in 2011 where he had, he was the interim head coach. Mm. And there was, you know, Braxton was a freshman. They were playing what, a Joe Bowserman, who was very, very <laughs> average. Um, and, you know, just trying – I mean, they won six games, remember? Like, law, uh, did they lose at Michigan? I think, think they lost. Yeah, they did. They was a – they was a Devere Posey overthrow from winning that game. Yeah, and that yeah. was like the just that was the one one time like Michigan had beat Ohio State in like a decade. But yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. Any anywho, I mean that was my point is that was a tough year for Fickle, and it it sort of like didn't blackball him, but it but it prohibited him from being in the contention for the the head job like right after that, and it worked out. I mean, once the sense he really turned that program around. I wonder even if he did have a successful season. Like say they went ten and two or eleven and one. Like, do you think they yeah, keep but, but him and the, not bring Urban? No, in? no, like, I'm not. I'm not saying that they keep him, but I'm saying it would have like, let's say after. You know, I don't know. I'm. I'm just thinking like here down the line. Maybe. Maybe they would have kept him. I don't know. But my. I, I guess because he was the interim coach for that one year and things didn't go that well. Like even if Ryan Day left now, like I would hope that Fickle has has earned the right to be in that conversation. But he's um, in a for, he, he in a contract with Wisconsin, so it's like they uh, what are they gonna buy? Yeah, they gonna do, buy him do, out? Do, do, well, first off, Ryan Day I don't think is going anywhere. But yeah, yeah, you buy people out. That'd be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just thought I thought 2011 was a really tough spot for Fickle to be in. I think it is the best the best job he could. I don't disagree. I like Coach Fick. Um, at, when he was the D coordinator here, he was the guy that just kept it real and obviously had some success at Cincinnati and Wisconsin. The Wisconsin thing is because he's changing up the uh, Wisconsin philosophy a little bit. Obviously, they are heavy. They used to be known for the running backs and offensive linemen. And now he's trying to bring that spread concept there, and it's just it's it's just tough. It's tough when you got when you got guys on your roster that was recruited here for a certain style, and now you're switching the style. I think it's just going to take some time, and it'll take a minute. I mean, you saw their offense is just really kind of anemic right now. Uh, watched a little bit of that Bama game over the weekend, and 
Yeah, I mean, they, they, they're going to play good defense, and they're going to try to eventually get the spread offense going there. But, I mean, the reason why they've been so good in the past is they got them big old, you know, freaking corn-fed white boys, man, that can <laughs> yeah. play on the, on the offensive line, you know, uh, to, to steal a stereotype from, uh, from, from the white corner, you know. Uh, but, no, I mean, I, I do think that Wisconsin will be a good team. They'll be a worthy adversary. Yeah. All right, so let's end it with this. We got about five more minutes left. Let's end it with this. What do you want to see or do you expect to see? Or give me a player that you're looking at this this Saturday against Marsh. Um, dude, it's so hard because I don't really know that we're going to see or learn anything more about Ohio State this weekend mm. other than, you know, I, w- I, w- I would like to see the running game go out there yeah. and run for like – 300 yards. I mean, that would be amazing, especially considering I think that the defensive front of Marshall is pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, on the season, I was reading some stuff like they're, uh, they're only giving up 3.1 yards per, per attempt, 151 on the ground. So, I mean, they're, they're a decent, decent ground uh, defense, but that's it, man. Henderson, uh, Judkins, see those guys kind of, kind of ball out uh, would be great. Yeah, I agree with you. I I mean, obviously, yeah, the run game has obviously been the thing that's been big. Uh, Oh, that's my daughter. I'm sorry. Joe, go, go. (laughs) So, yeah, I want to see that run game continue to get good. But you want to see Will Howard continue to progress. You know, I think he's got a good chemistry. I do want to see some more of the other receivers get involved. You know, obviously, J.J., Jeremiah Smith's been the focal point. Him and Will's will have the great connection. But, you know, you got a Mecca over there. You got Carnell Tate. You got Brandon Ennis. I want to see some of these guys get going as well. You know, I want to see him spread that ball around to other guys. Maybe J.J. is just that special. You know, maybe they, you know, when you got a guy that you, that you got a good connection with, obviously you continue to look for him and get him the ball. But, like, that's just what it is. I mean, that guy, JJ, is, is different. I want to continue to see him going, but I do want to see Mecca continue to get more involved mm-hmm. in this offense because he's like on he's on the verge of breaking that record for receptions and yards, and I feel like mm-hmm. a guy that's that close got to find a way to get it done. Yeah, I mean that 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 would be uh, that'd be incredible. Uh, I, I I think the receivers man are going to be just stupid good this year. I'm, dude, I'm just really looking they forward to are. get. No, I, I know, I know, but I mean, it's with Jeremiah, dude, it's like, I know, I don't even. Know. It's just <laughs> like, know. it's like not, it's like not fair, man. It's like not fair. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. It really is that he's like, cause you know they they was talking about it all season, and I'm just like, all right, he the number one receiver, yes. And then I seen him in the spring, and I'm just like. Okay. Like you see him and you're like, okay, like he definitely got the size. And then when I seen some of the yep. plays he was making, <laughs> it was funny because Bobby, Bobby Carpenter goes to the practices and he says the joke is it's not if, it's when. When is he gonna make a play on somebody? And the fact that he's taking that same motto just to the regular season, it's ridiculous, man. That man, I don't know if freshman win Bolitnikovs. <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know if he's in that conversation. But if he continue to keep playing the way he does, man, I, it's going to be hard not to be. I know the guy from uh, Arizona had that crazy first game to get like 300 yards or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if Jeremiah keep playing like this, man, I, he should be definitely in there in the conversation towards the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, there, there's there's no question about that. Dude, I'm looking forward to the Michigan State game in in a, in two weeks, man, in Big Ten play getting – Yeah, Michigan State, like they, they got better. They got a lot better, and I hate Michigan State because they cost me two national championships, but I can't I can't deny the fact that they look good. I mean, they, they got that quarterback, uh, Childs or Chi, Chi, whatever his name is. He's come over there. I think he came from uh, Oklahoma State. I think that's where they're Oregon State came from Oregon State with that coach and he's got things going. So it's going to be it's going to be better than a lot of people think they got a wide receiver over there. That's been pretty good as well. So I am looking forward to that. But first things first, obviously, you got to you got to handle Marshall. And and like I say to me, 
I, my prediction of that game, I think they win 42 to 6. 42 6. That's my, my 42 guess. 6. Okay. 42 to 6. What you got? I'll go. Uh, oh, man. I think here's, here's what I like. I actually like the over 51. 51 uh, points? I do. I do. I don't think Ohio State's going to cover. I think they're going to win by 35. <laughs> I think they're going to win by 35. What did I say? 42 to 6? What? 42. Uh, dude, no, I'm stealing you. You said 30. You said 30. You said 30 you said 30. No, no, you said 35 10. No, I did not. <laughs> no, I did not. I said if. The, well, you. Oh, excuse scenario. me. You asked me a hypothetical if they won yeah. 35 10. I'm going to say 45 10. I'm going to say 45 10. So you think they do give up a touchdown? Yes. You heard it? Yeah. You and I think that touchdown – I think that – here's – I think that touchdown will come early. I think, like, in the first quarter, Marshall scores, and it's, like, I don't know, 14-7 or 10-7 or something. It wouldn't be shocking because they're coming off a of bye week and they're trying to get back in the rhythm. So And, and they I think that they can script a drive, put a drive yeah. together, you know. So. Uh, I'm not mad at that. I don't. I don't want them to. I want them to keep this no touchdown streak going for as long as possible. So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, that's all the time we got this week. Obviously, we'll be back with y'all next week talking about a a dub and talking about Big Ten play. Tyvis Powell, Dustin Fox. See y'all next week. Peace.